resources to fight back, or if you expended all of your resources because you picked the uh, wrong attorney out of the gate, uh, you could find yourself in jail uh, or your family broken up very quickly. What kind of advice do you give people? Somebody calls you and says, man, I don't know what happened, but the ex-wife went crazy and she started making all these accusations. What should I do? What do you tell them? Well, I, I, of course, I have to get a timeline. I have to, I have to get a, a clear, concise picture of where the case was and where it is and, and what kind of equity at law the, the person who's calling me is seeking, whether they want custody or they want joint custody or they just want, you know, Disneyland dad visitation time or exactly what are they looking for. Uh, or whether they're under a criminal investigation, they're about to be arrested. I get cases like that too. So it all, every case is different. Every, ca every case is individualistic and specific. But, uh, people need to get into their computers. I, I assume most people out there now have computers and they're on the internet. Uh, if you don't, uh, you're living in the dark ages and you need to be. Um, but you need to, you need to construct a timeline, which is simply a journal or chronology, uh, by dates and events. Uh, and jog your memory and, and, and type that in because every attorney is going to ask for that, and I certainly ask for that when I get a case. <clears throat> and then, uh, uh, you know, I, I do suggest folks pick up my book, Elusive Innocence. It's at my website. It's at Amazon.com. Um, there's a section in there, like I mentioned, uh, how to choose your lawyer. Uh, not all lawyers are created equal. Not all experts are created equal. And in these cases, uh, you know, a lawyer will try to take your money, uh, they'll advertise in your yellow pages or maybe you see them on TV that they handle these cases, but then you find out they do the DUI, the bankruptcy, and everything else, and, and these cases may comprise maybe 20% of their practice. You need an attorney who does basically this type of litigation only, and those lawyers are few and far between. What about the question of cooperation? I've heard people say that, you know, really, if you're burning your kids with cigarettes, but you tell the CPS lady that, you know, I'm really trying to do better and, and I really appreciate your help, that they'll, they'll probably let you keep your kid as long as you uh, defer to them or seem like you want to defer to them. But then again, if you've never laid a hand on your kid and they come to your house and you tell them, get the hell off my property, you'll probably never see your kid again. So the uh, question yeah, is, to what degree should you cooperate or not? I don't advise people to be that uh, blunt and crass and arrogant with CPS because unless you have unlimited resources, uh, these people can make your life a living hell in a New York minute, and they will do so. So, um, you know, take it from me. I've been doing this for 20 years. Um, the so if they is, come knocking, you should let them in and try to be polite? Well, I wouldn't say just let them in. Uh, certainly you want to glean what they're there for. Uh, they're not going to, by law, because they have confidentiality statutes, they're not going to tell you who made the allegation. They won't even tell you the substance and content of the allegation. <clears throat> but you can, uh, you know, you can nicely say, look, uh, uh, I'll take your card, and uh, once I contact my attorney, uh, I'll be in touch with you. So, so then you're putting them on the defense, because when they come up to your door, they're the intimidator, not you. You want to show them in a polite uh, smart, intelligent way that you can be just as intimidating <laughs> and, uh, you know, tell them you have a lawyer, uh, even though you don't. But, you know, the point is, uh, um, you know, if you just sign in the dotted line to a, what's called a consent agreement with your attorney and CPS, you might be consenting to dependency, which means when a judge uh, adjudicates this case, your child is gleaned to be dependent. That, by law, means the child has been abused, neglected, or abandoned, and you could wind up losing your parental rights. So you, you, you can't be too crass and arrogant, but you can't be too, uh, too conciliatory and, and just agree with everything that they say uh, because these people can't be trusted. I mean, uh, again, they're well-meaning, well-intentioned, but you can't trust these CPS people. Just because they say they're going to give you your kit back doesn't mean they will. I've also heard stories about people who became – they began to be investigated because they went and applied for food stamps. And the government says, oh, here, line up here, and we'll buy all your groceries for you. Oh, you have kids? We're going to start an investigation because, obviously, you can't take care of them if you're coming oh. to us for food money. That is rather hypocritical and oxymoronic, but it happens all the time uh, where the government's caring for you, but then they're investigating you on the other hand. So, in uh, fact, I read a case on your website. The, 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 you know, the poorer you are, the more impoverished you are, the, the more indigent you are, uh, the more you become a target. So uh, you need to keep a low profile, um, realizing that anything you say 
uh, in the court of public opinion uh, can wind back up in the court of CPS. Right. Right. Yeah, you you uh, told a story on your website, on the blog there somewhere, I think, it was a story of a woman who had a tiny little Christmas tree and just a few presents under the tree for her kids. And uh, I think you, uh, I don't know if it was you that wrote, I think it was you that wrote the entry that said, that, you know, they came and took this lady's kids away because she had so few presents. She obviously wasn't measuring up to society's standards of Christmas time or whatever. Um, but at the same time, uh, I believe you commented she could have gone ahead and spent, you know, bought a nice tree and more presents and then came to the state and asked the social workers for more money for the bills. But instead, she decided to be frugal, and basically they took her kids away for not getting enough welfare from them. Yeah, so CPS decided to play Santa Claus and just take the children. Um, of course, I'm being sarcastic, but, uh, you know, this happens, and it happens more often than you know. And uh, I, I wish uh, uh, I could, you know, take care of all the families out there in America, but with 300 million people in this country, I just can't. Uh, as it is, I field 500 emails a day and probably 5 to 25 phone calls a day from all over the world, and, and it's rather overwhelming. Uh, and I can only win one case at one time uh, um, until we change these laws. Uh, they, these laws are geared to making allegations. They are geared to uh, inciting allegations. They want allegations to be made. They want reports to be made. Uh, the, the more you see the Ted Bundy, uh, uh, Jeffrey Dahmer cases on the front page, uh, the, 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 the uh, Andrew Yates cases, the more you're going to get more allegations. Yeah, isn't that interesting that it's, it's sort of like, uh, I guess I remember, uh, I can't remember the name of the movie now, but when there was some movie back in the 40s or 50s where Cary Grant didn't wear an undershirt, and after that, undershirt sales across the country just plummeted, and people just started wearing their button-up shirts without an undershirt. And it's sort of the same thing with child abuse cases, like, oh, gee, there's a movie about child abuse. Here, let me find somebody to narc on. I don't know, give me a phone. Dial 911, and, and let's see if I can find somebody to point my finger at. TV gave me a great idea. Well, it does, and uh, certainly there are many lifetime uh, movie network uh, movies, uh, you know, after these very issues. On both sides of the coin now, uh, we're starting to see a little more balanced perspective than we were 20 years ago and, and starting to see more unfounded and false allegation movies and documentaries and, and things like that. And I know PBS has done a good job in trying to keep a balanced, objective uh, approach, <clears throat> but... Uh, Unfortunately, the, the number of cases will always be about 3 million a year. Um, uh, this is a very imperfect system. Uh, we certainly need to uh, refine it and uh, hone in on, on the problems and correct it. And um, if they started listening to people like myself uh, and allowed us up to Washington, D.C., <clears throat> to, to show that we have an expertise on this side of the coin, uh, you know, and if you read the, the right on my homepage, it says, you know, if, if we – if we win the battle against false accusations, we will win the war against child abuse. And, and that's very true, because this is uh, as much or more of a problem than actual genuine abuse. All right, everybody. It's the Weekend Interview Show. I'm Scott Horton. I'm talking with Dean Tong. He is a forensic consultant and expert witness in child abuse cases. His website is abuse-excuse.com. His books are Elusive Innocence, Survival Guide for the Falsely Accused, Ashes to Ashes, Families to Dust, False Accusations of Child Abuse, Don't Blame Me, Daddy, False Accusations of Child Sexual Abuse, and Love and Loathing, Protecting Your Mental Health and Legal Rights When Your Partner Has Borderline Personality Disorder. Uh, when we get back from this break, sir, I'm going to ask you all about if you all of a sudden were the majority leader of the Senate and it was up to you to rewrite the laws, how would you structure it so that children are protected and innocent families are protected as well. It's the Weekend Interview Show. I'm Scott Horton, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to the Weekend Interview Show. I'm Scott Horton talking with Dean Tong, 
from abuse-excuse.com. Uh, he's a forensic consultant and expert witness in child abuse cases. Now, actually, there's one more thing that I wanted to ask you about real quick before how you would have the law uh, written uh, in a more fair manner. But uh, real quickly, I'd like to ask you your opinion on a law that's being debated here in the Texas legislature, uh, emotions running very high on both sides. Uh, the Texas government is attempting to outlaw gay people adopting, or not adopting, uh, being foster parents. And right now it's perfectly legal for gay people to be foster parents in the state of Texas, and they're trying to outlaw that. And I want to know uh, whether you have any opinions on that subject, sir. I'm going to reserve comment on that one, I think, Scott. I, I'd rather not go there. Uh, I, I get I get a little too emotional on that one. Um, I mean, my state of Florida has banned same-sex custody. Massachusetts, on the other hand, has allowed it. I think the country is divisive on this. <clears throat> I think it's something that's going to be decided, uh, obviously, in Congress, uh, uh, ultimately at the U.S. Supreme Court level. Right. All right. Well, I respect that. I can see how... You don't want to take a stand on an issue like that. I want to say for my own sake that uh, individuals are individuals, and they're all innocent until proven guilty, and the state can go to hell, but, you know, sure. that's just me. As far as, as far as what I do, if I was in the Senate, um, I would eradicate both the uh, CAPT and the VAWA, uh, the Child Abuse Prevention and Treatment Act, and the Violence Against Women's Act. I would um, uh, enact a Children and Families Act nationally, federally, uh, which would include some of the provisions from both of those acts, but... Uh, number one, it would require uh, mandatory uh, random testing of sexual predators because um, recently we've had a rash of deaths down here in my state of Florida. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the science here is being ignored, so we don't know when a sexual predator becomes a violent sexual predator and commits murder, has homicidal ideations and commits murder. So mandatory testing by penile plethysmography enabled screening will be, uh, would be uh, very important. Uh, we certainly should eradicate the uh, anonymous phone calls that go to these tipster lines and make them confidential uh, to stop the witch hunts. We should uh, abrogate uh, CPS's immunity uh, to give them the same immunity as the police because right now CPS has more immunity than, than the officers do, than the authorities do. Uh, police have quasi-prosecutorial or qualified immunity. CPS has sovereign absolute immunity, so we need to, need to hurl that back. Uh, you know, we need to uh, uh, increase the judicial legal threshold in both family and dependency court. It's 51% versus 49%. The credibility, he said, she said, what a child says. We need to up that to 75% clear and convincing evidence. That will uh, cause a lot of these cases to be decided by a greater threshold of evidence where, where, where innocent families will keep their kids versus a judge uh, tilting that pendulum 51 to 49%. So those are some of the things that I would do uh, if I was in and, um, you know, uh, some of the ideas that I have, uh, to, you know, to, to better balance this, this perspective here uh, with alleged child abuse and, and, and domestic violence cases. Uh, the other thing, of course, domestic violence against men uh, has become a pretty big issue uh, over the last uh, year or two within the media. Uh, the Violence Against Women's Act is exactly what it is. Uh, there is no Violence Against Men's Act. Cool. All right. Well, I sure appreciate your insight today, sir. Um, for people who want to get a hold of you, abuse-excuse.com. Any other websites you want to recommend? Uh, no, that's no. about it. Uh, a good a good primer book besides mine uh, for people who are more interested in this issue at Amazon.com is called Out of Control by Brenda Scott. All right. Thank you very much, Dean Tong, everybody. And Thanks it's, for having me, Scott. You're very welcome, sir. We'll be right back. Talk with VZ Lawton. He survived the Oklahoma City bombing. Stay tuned.